Hello, my name is Rakesh Rajani. I work with Twaweza Citizen Centered Initiative in East Africa. I'm very glad to see this report, Hunting for Per Diems, being launched today. I think it's a really important report. It, it in a sense, uh, talks about the gorilla in the room. Everybody knows about these allowances, and we kind of talk about them quietly, but we don't talk about them in an explicit way, and I hope this report will, will help us do that. The allowances matter because, first, a huge amount of money is involved. We are talking about hundreds of millions of dollars being involved. It, they also matter because uh, there is a real value for money issue here, that the money is spent in ways that don't really benefit people. And they matter because they create perverse incentives. You go to government offices, offices to get help, to get services, and people are not there. You go to a, a clinic and people are not there. Why? Because they are running after, hunting after per diems, running after allowances. Not doing their core job because there's an incentive to do something that actually doesn't matter. Um, and in, in that sense, the, the worst thing here, perhaps, is, is that it creates a cynicism. Everybody knows that what you're really doing is not making a difference, but what you're doing is, in fact, running after money uh, to, to, to personally enrich yourself. So you, we get cynical about workshops, we get cynical about the very thing that is meant to help you, we really know is not there for that purpose. So the report specifically, I think it gives some very valuable information across the three countries. It uh, tells us the ways in which uh, these allowances are abused, uh, the factors that influence them. I think the box towards the end about the different ways in which they are abused, I think is very, very useful. The comparisons across the three countries, I think, is also enlightening and, and helpful. So I think. I think it should be required reading for anybody doing development in those countries and I hope we will use it very well. I think the problem with the report is with its recommendations and its kind of analysis at the end. It recognizes that this isn't a purely administrative matter. And yet when it comes to the recommendation it slips into talking about Paris uh, declaration and harmonization and so forth. As if we just had a better administrative bureaucracy the problem would be resolved. But we know that it won't. We know that there are deeper issues at track. Remember that the people who are in charge of making these allowances, the ones who established them in the first place, and the ones who have the power to reform them, are the very ones who benefit from it. It's not the ordinary teacher or the nurse who really benefits from the allowances. It's the permanent secretary, and it's the NGO director, and the ministers, and the people who join presidents on the entourages. They make a lot of money from this. So why should they change it? If they can get away with it, why don't they get away with it? And that's, so that's, that's what's happening right now. And I think what it'll take is a lot of public pressure. It's not about bureaucratic reform. It's about politics. So what should be done? I have three uh, ideas and then an overall conclusion. First is, I think, just stop the euphemisms. Call a spade a spade. Instead of calling it a transport allowance or anything of that, let's just call them fees. Let's call them payments. Second, because they are payments, let's tax them. They should be fully taxed and there should be laws around taxing them. Um, and third and most importantly, I think, is make radical transparency. These days, the ICT world that we have, the ubiquity of the mobile phone, internet, and being able to collect information, makes it very possible to share that information. Imagine if there was a requirement that every allowance, paid by NGOs, paid by governments, paid by donors, should be made at the granular level public, so that anybody can go online and do that. Uh, I think that transparency would first reveal things for what they are, and it would reveal them not to a few bureaucrats. It's not about the control and auditor general, the internal auditor, and the people in charge knowing, because that will never work. It'll be about the citizens knowing. It's about the citizens uh, embarrassing you for being there. And that transparency, we've seen it in practice in Tanzania recently. When the parliament uh, decided to vote a huge allowance for themselves, there was an outcry. Not an outcry from the control and auditor general or from the the authorities, and it was the citizens asking, how dare these members who, of parliament who are there to represent us, how dare do they give themselves so much money when we have so much other problems? That they say they don't have enough money for very basic things like water and health, uh, uh, doctors and so forth, but they have money to pay for themselves. And it is that sort of accountability, the bottom-up citizen awareness and citizen pressure, that has in fact, in some ways, scuttled this that such that even the president's office and the state house have had to say, well, we haven't agreed to this, and, and that's what's making a difference. And yet even these three ideas, it'll help some, but I don't think they're going to transform anything. I think the deeper issue here 
is around the, in, around the, in the alienation between the purposes of development and what allowances pay for. So I think it's not about administratively improving allowances because at the end they'll never work. You can have try to have the most efficient administrative system in the world in Tanzania and Ethiopia and Malawi and yet the problem of allowances won't be solved. Perhaps you need to think much more radically. What if instead of paying for inputs such as travel and materials and so on, what if you paid for outcomes? What if the district education officer knew that if he delivered the results that he had to deliver, number of children's learning, he would get paid for that. And the better he did, the more he would get paid. And it didn't matter how they spent the money, but it was the results that matter. If we turned our entire payment system on its head like that, what it would do was, it was in fact concentrate the mind of people responsible to focus on what matters, to deliver the real results, the real differences in people's lives that matter. And I think that's the future. It's not about improving administration. It's about paying for outcomes, paying for results, paying for a difference in people's lives, instead of just simply tinkering and improving an administrative structure. I think that's the challenge we have in front of us today. Thank you very much.